In this video, I will be going over some things that you can do to be a successful player in general, as well as what I do as a Baco player that you can try out yourself. If you're relatively new to Battle Rate right, or Baco, you should avoid the advanced section I have in the video unless you are interested in hearing what I have to say. If not, just fast forward to the next part of the guide to save time. If you are determined to play Baco and know his abilities well enough to make your own builds, enjoy the advanced section where you can decide what is best for your particular playstyle. If you are a veteran Baco player, I recommend you skip basic sections of the guide unless you are interested in what I have to say. Please watch the advanced section, anyone should feel free to comment on what I say, add some insight into discussion in the comments down below or on the reddit thread I will have posted in the description on battle rates you enjoy taking and why you enjoy taking them. And on that note, let's begin. Battle Rite Builds This is where I will go over the battle rates I enjoy taking and the different situations you should take them in. The protection build is used when you play against high mobility characters like Croak, Shifu, and either Taya or Paloma. Since they give teammates the ability to dodge your ult, so you rarely use it unless you find the opportunity to do so. You need to aid your allies when they get focused. Not only does it help you stay alive, but it provides a ton of protection for your teammates. In my CC Sustain build, I replace Bravery with Mammoth Stomp for comps that have low mobility, no Croak, Shifu, Taya, or Paloma to other side or Tornado. Good against enemies with counters because you can charge straight through them once their abilities that allow them to dodge are used up and on cooldown, which leads into basic combos and ultimate combos, which I will go over later on in the video. Battle Rite Builds in this advanced section, I will go over every battle rate Baco has and talk about the specific scenarios where they can be useful. Axe and Shield, I feel, is only worth taking when taken with a Rampage. While Time Ball Works can deflect anything coming your way and increase attack speed from Rampage will make you have those Ball Works a good amount of the time for when you need them. The only issue is hitting other people's counters and being reckless with your auto attacks. But this can be a good way to punish people who have already wasted those abilities. Hamstring helps stick to enemies and continue dealing damage without having to use any other abilities unless they do. Howling Axes, three autos fully charge and recharge your axe. Three autos in Rampage does not give you enough time for your blood axe to recharge, so you normally swing four times, then throw an axe. If you take Rampage, you could use this to its fullest potential if the previous blood axe reduced its cooldown by one second you could get an axe off after three hits but you have to hit the axes so it's risky and overall i feel like it's not worth it if you build an offensive build to punish mistakes rampage and howling axes would combo pretty well but the battle right by itself would only help with poking from distances the red axe provides sustain which is especially important in comps that don't have a support allows you to be more reckless and continue to win trades versus warlord's axe Gaining 10 HP with a fully charged axe, I feel is better than dealing 5 bonus damage to an enemy with a fully charged axe. Warlord's axe, however, helps you secure orb in situations where you don't have control over the center of the map. If you're going to take one, I feel like it should be the red axe. If you have another build for teams where you don't have a support, Warlord's axe might be better. Adrenaline Rush, the empowered auto attack, could be used to punish people after breaking counters by leaping on them, but I feel like Adrenaline Rush is best when taken on Shield Dash. After charging someone into a wall, you either auto them or bait counters depending on whether or not you have the wall slam stun. If you like Adrenaline Rush for your leap, comment on this because I don't see a great use for it, but maybe I just have not thought of a scenario where this is really useful other than to punish after breaking the counter with leap. Bravery, 33% damage reduction used on allies when they're getting focused. Whoever is on them uses an ability to dodge something your ally threw out. You can leap to the rescue, deal 22 damage to them, and shield your ally, making them very tanky for a short while with the uh, 40 damage shield. Heroic Leap. If the enemy team gets separated by abilities or pressure, you could use the increased leap range to gang up on one person by closing large distances in one short leap. But I feel that Baco's Leap is best used when dodging attacks or hitting enemies caught in CC. Might be good if you're really playing protected Baco and you want to just leap to your ally no matter the distance with bravery. But this power just helps people who are playing poorly feel. Teammates should always try to stay grouped as possible, so this shouldn't be necessary. Mobile defense is good for closing spaces and getting in the way of skill shots very quickly. With the enhanced move speed while bulwark is up. 
but this just helps with poor positioning. Of course, there can be situations where having this move speed would be useful to protect poorly positioned teammates or disengaging, so it might not be a bad decision to take versus certain comps, but it is not a staple. Shield Bash adds even more mobility with an extra dash that can weaken. Be used to reposition or disengage. The weaken is of course going to be useful, but it is very hard to use against melee characters effectively. You would need the bulwark to get the 1.5 second stun, then drop shield immediately, get one or two M1s, axe throw, and then weaken if everything worked out perfectly. I think this is a crazy battle right just by itself. To be able to deal damage to someone and end with a weaken so they can't return damage for the next two seconds. I feel like you should decide between this and wall slam. If you take wall slam, assuming you stun them, you will cancel the shield, deal damage, and end it with a charge into a wall and a free auto tick, which means more damage, but they are not weakened. You don't have ball work or dash anymore, so you're pretty vulnerable, making this a more challenging battle right to use effectively, but a better one in the right situation. Adrenaline Slam. Increases damage of the free auto attack when taking wall slam by almost double. It also knocks the enemy back slightly, even though it is not stated in the tooltip, which is really noticeable when keeping people in the death vortex in sudden death. Raging Ramp. Increases dash distance, which is situational. I would not take this every game, only in games that have walls that are far from the center, since it does not increase dash range of the EX ability, just the base dash. If I need extra dash distance on a map with walls closer to the orb, I can EXE, and this is not necessary. It simply makes it easier to ram people in the walls in different positions, but wall slam or adrenaline slam could be taken instead of maps that are more close quarters. Wall slam. The stun can be used to increase damage output after alt by attacking, then ramming into the wall to stun a second time and getting more attacks up with the mammoth stomp battle rate. You could get a collective 1.6 second stun without it. It is just under a second stun in total, and you can just get a free auto or blood axe after ult. You would need to ult, then dash into wall and auto, but knowing you can get one auto off for free after slamming an enemy into a wall is nice, so I enjoy taking this battle right. Especially if it's empowered, the second auto after adrenaline slam could still be cancelled or intentionally miss the bait abilities. Rampage increases attack speed and axe throw speed great for punishing people after they miss counters and it comes well with axe and shield and howling axes as i mentioned before mammoth stomp only increases the duration of the stun at the end of the ult which is great for finishing people off because you can get up to 126 damage if they have no escape with my cc sustain build and if they have something to get away and you truly combo them you can deal about 100 damage from axe throw m1 and charging into a wall Inspiration is okay. The 25% increased maximum energy would allow you to incapacitate someone and then ult them for free, but that is not necessary. If you wait for escapes, you should be able to hit ult to begin with, and 10% increased energy generation is not important enough to take this, but that's just what I think. Let me know if you feel differently about inspiration. General tips. Basic. When protecting your allies, pressure enemies without using leap, and you can do this by throwing axes with the snare using dash when enemies are in bad positions and mounting up to close gaps. Only use leap to dodge an attack or bait an ability for you to land an ultimate. Use leap against opponents who are focusing your teammate. Once they use the abilities to punish whoever they are after, you can leap in, give the damage reduction buff to your ally, and 40 damage shield with R. Don't wait to use it on an ally if you must. Use your jump to dodge an enemy's attack and punish them when you land. With bravery and shield from R, you will win most trades. Just dash out of danger if you hit a counter or need to dodge a skill shot once ball work is down. If you take the mammoth stump at all, make sure you wait for an opponent to use all abilities that allow them to dodge. Bait them out with leap if you have to. Just do not use your ultimate while they have escapes. Ability combos include both advanced and basic combos. If you plan on learning how to play Baka, you should learn both, so I recommend everyone watches this section. These combos can be executed after evasion abilities have been used. EXE into wall stun, then blood axe. If you don't have wall stun, the snare still helps land axe. EXE into wall stun, then leap. EXE into wall stun, axe throw, then leap. Dash into wall, stun, and basic attack. Ultimate into axe throw, dash into wall stun, 
Then basic attack. This is not a true combo, so there is room to escape. If you know they don't have any abilities to escape, you can do this combo. Bulwark block. Cancel shield. Melee shield dash into stun and melee attack again. Shield bash required. Block melee attack. Cancel bulwark. Swing axe. Reactivate bulwark for shield bash to weaken. Ultimate true combo for 107 damage. Ultimate swing axe. Dash into wall stun. Swing X again. Just keep playing Baku and time you will slowly begin to realize what to do in all kinds of different situations you will be placed in. This guide can't replace experiences you gain in game, so give it a go and thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment either in Reddit or in the comments down below on what you like to take on Baku and why. If you enjoyed the video make sure you drop a like. I always appreciate the thumbs up and good luck in the arena.